Peace, love, and light, family. How's everybody doing today on this super Saturday? It's your girl, Morgan Renee Myers, just tuning in with you all. Um, I wanted to come do a lyric breakdown video. Excuse me. So, I like to do lyric breakdown videos for, like, um, songs by artists that we know or may not know. But today I want to do one of um, from my book. Because I've been creating conversations in my group, The Exchange. Y'all know that my focus is to is the family. And so I have the uncomfortable yet necessary conversations surrounding sex, relationships, and communicating. And so um, I was talking to them about some things um, from a sexual standpoint yesterday and today. And one of them was about how do men know the women that they choose to have raw sex with? And how do women know that they're willing to receive this raw dickage? Because it's, it's a thing. Like, I don't care how much people... People try to say, I need to see papers first. I always use condoms. There are always situations where the question of condoms is not even presented, is not um, expected or demanded. There's plenty of situations where people have sex prior to knowing anybody's status or being prepared in that way. Um, and so I made another status um, on my public page talking about, like, no, naturally, no one wants to wear condoms. Like, we know the reasons why we should or do um, to prevent unplanned pregnancies, um, to prevent or to help prevent STD transfers and things like that. But from a natural standpoint, no, we don't. Because that's not the first thing that's coming to mind. Like, you're not born with... Um, contraceptives on your private part so i don't think uh naturally that condoms is a first start for people but it happens it totally happens and having you know had my experiences taking um some time off of celibacy working with the youth and seeing what they're focused on and things that they're doing it just makes me want to bring this conversation up more and more and more about like you know, some of the, de the decisions that we make and being honest and talking about that. So I'm having a lot of people um, in the exchange group that are saying, no, I need to have them papers or I got to be in a, like a high level commitment with you engaged or married or, you know, something like that. And I'm like, I know so many people that that's not a stipulation at all. So I just want to read the, one of these poems that I wrote in my book called Womb Rage because it has a line that talks about um, my thoughts on that. And then I'm going to break down each line of the poem. So, I'm going to upload this to my YouTube channel. So, if you can't catch this live, all of this live, you can always come back to it. But here it goes. This is from my book, The Celibacy Chronicles, which was um, which was published this time last year, December 9th of last year. So, um, again, I'm going to read through the poem, and then I'm going to go line by line to break down what I meant when I wrote that, okay? So, it's called Womb Rage. My womb is raging. Vulva pulsating, my body is telling me it's time for mating, but I'm waiting quite impatiently. Every attempt to fornicate falls underway. They busy, they have women, they have energies and drama that come along with them that I don't desire to deal with. So I try to trick my mind and think about other things to do with my time. This is new for me. 10 years straight of sexual elation and now at 26 coming face to face with self-love and patience, knowing thyself and hating that it took this long to find out has me feeling some kind of way. Suppressing daddy issues and conversations with my mother about my experiences for fear I'll cause a trigger for her too. Orgasms with my frustrations taking their rightful place, often with the wrong people and motives. No questions ever asked by the guys about my sexual past. We all just learn how to relax in the comfort of a warm space. Trust was risky, but we did it anyway. Searching for our high, each other's drug of choice, addicted to bad decisions that felt so good, a rush, going nowhere fast. So now I have to carry all the names of my immaturity to my future. Who was designed to cover and love me. This game isn't fair, but it is reality. Daughters search for daddies and men destined to do her wrong. No man to model fathering skills in the home. To show her how queens are treated and make her aware of her throne. So she's single and out here trying to make love on her own. Wanting a bond that feels good and is long. Settling for less because no standards were in place. Just go with how you feel. Then life is created. 
And now she has womb rage. Mad that she's carrying the baby of a man that didn't know she was sacred and relinquished his responsibility to have any place in their lives. Mad like so long ago she had dreams of a ring but lost self-control. Mad like seats at tables discussing wedding invitations is null and void. Mad like elevator jams and traffic contractions. Baby don't deserve this type of life but my morals won't let me abort a blessing. Funny, because morals was nowhere around when the texts were sent. Sex happened. Now you naked, exposed, extremely uncomfortable, body calling you back home, this time for your own pain. Decisions made in the dark return to the light just makes her want to fight. The battle is internal and will always be. Once we learn to tame that beast, only then can we truly be free. So that's the poem, Womb Rage. I do need to pin my YouTube name. I'm going to have to do it after this video is over because this iPad be giving me too much trouble. It's, it's taking too much time. Um, but so I'm going to go back through line by line real quick. So I just got done reading Womb Rage. So I'm going to break it down for you. My womb is raging, vulva pulsating. My body is telling me it's time for mating, but I'm waiting quite impatiently. Every attempt to fornicate falls on the way. They busy. They have women. They have energies and drama that come along with them that I don't desire to deal with. So... That's just kind of that phase in life where it's like, you know you want more. You know just having random casual sex isn't all that you want to do. Um, but it's it's a release. It's something fun. It's with somebody maybe that you're comfortable with. It feels good physically. So it's like, I know that I need to settle down and focus on some things right now. But my womb, like, I'm, I'm 26, 27, 28, 20, like, my, my, my clock is ticking. I'm not married. I don't have kids for some of us. Um, and for those that maybe do have kids still trying to find that mate or somebody to like raise their family with or get established in their family it's like i'm going through this time in my body and my mind where i know my mind wants to do one thing my heart wants to do another my vagina wants to do another um and then the, the people that you have options of being intimate with either already got other women or they just super busy i don't really have time to link up like that or they just got other energies and drama that come along with them that i don't desire to deal with so I try to trick my mind and think about find other things to think about and do with my time. This is new for me. Ten years straight of sexual elation and now coming face to face with self-love and patience, knowing thyself and hating that it took this long to find out has me feeling some kind of whack. So ten years straight of sexual elation, I started having sex at 16. I was 26 when I wrote this book. Um, and to go on a, a journey of uh with staining from something that you've had that long it it and i question this in other poems of the book it is sex and addiction was sex something that i had to have like um it, it just makes you think about that so it's like 10 years of doing something that you've been used to doing and now you're telling yourself and your body no um, you're having all kind of thoughts. So I, I've made statuses before about how like you can be celibate all day long or absent or whatever and still have a very nasty mind. <laughs> like you can still be thinking all kind of stuff, feeling all kinds of ways. You're just not acting on it physically. So my journey had to really delve into a lot of mental things as well. It wasn't just the physical. That was um the main force that was being used and recognized by people but that mindset the stuff people don't see but you know and you feel and you act out of um so knowing thyself and hating at it 10 years straight of sexual elation and now 26 coming face to face with self-love and patience knowing thyself and hating that it took this long to find out has me feeling some kind of way like why wasn't i taught about uh self-love and practicing patience early on maybe i was but it wasn't it wasn't implemented in me good enough because now I'm having to go through it. Um, suppressing daddy issues and conversations with my mother about my experiences for fear I'll cause a trigger for her too. So what is that like? Growing up, um, not having a consistent male figure around, masculine male figure around, your own biological father for whatever reasons, whether it be because he was going through his stuff, um, and mom wouldn't let him see me, or if it was the more so he, he wasn't making time his stuff, whatever, you know, like we get past the excuses or the reasons or whatever, um, 
But just the fact that it was not present. And then also growing up with a woman who had her own childhood traumas that have probably not been actively dealt with and healed from and talked about. Like, there's so much I don't know about my mom. And, like, that's a whole relationship in and of itself that still is continuing to be built up. Because, um... How can I feel comfortable expressing things to you if you never express things to me? Even if you tell me I can come to you about anything, if I don't feel that you're open-minded or, or would listen or that you're not going to be able to listen thoroughly um, or provide the support I need because you too have been hurt in a, in a sexual way, how are we going to ever have that conversation? So how am I as a daughter going to be able to relay these messages to my mom when she got her own dramas and traumas that ain't been dealt with? Suppressing daddy issues and conversations with my mother about my experiences for fear I'll cause a trigger for her too. Orgasms were my frustrations taking their rightful place, often with the wrong people and motives. That's like, what do we try to say? Because sex is, it is a powerful energy. Um, it's very magnetic. You can attract things from it. You can manifest. Um, you can have a great orgasm. You can create life. Sex is an awesome thing. I'm not negating that or saying it should stop as a whole because it shouldn't but orgasms or my frustrations taking their rightful place meaning i have the right and the ability to um you know release these energies uh but sometimes when it's with the wrong people and motives like if i'm just having payback sex because my my man um cheated on me and i'm going out here sleeping with his home you're doing something you know vicious yeah i had a right to have orgasm but what what is my motive <laughs> Who are the people that I'm choosing to give this whole entity of my womb space to? Like, this whole energetic transfer I'm about to have. Like, is this person even deserving? Like, do they even keep themselves up? And I don't even mean financially, just on a mental and a spiritual note. Like, and I don't mean, like, are they worthy? Like, nobody, like, some people are unworthy to have sex. But maybe some people are. It just, I mean, if you're not... working on you like actively you just out here wanting to be having sex like for what that's how you contribute to society okay no questions ever asked by the guys about my sexual past we all just learned to relax in the comfort of a warm space trust was risky but we did it anyway Searching for our high, each other's drug of choice, addicted to bad decisions that felt so good, a rush, going nowhere fast. So now I have to carry all the names of my immaturity to my future. That whole little snippet, is it just sticks out to me. Like, no guys ever ask about my sexual past. And I understand that, like, maybe from a male standpoint, well, I ain't trying to worry about what other dudes hit before I got to her. Like, we about to have sex now. I totally get that, but it's like that whole ideology, that's what I try to bring out on my platform. We are not having conversations about sex with people we're having sex with. Like, you know me how long and you never found out whether or not I have have an STD currently or if I've had one before. Like, that, that never crosses your mind to know. Um... Now, the whole, I get the whole not really asking people's body counts because you don't expect people to really be honest about that anyways. But just no, no guys ever asked about my sexual past. And it's like when you try to have conversations sometimes with people, it just get real jittery. Or they want to get right to being intimate. Or they don't even want to talk about it no more and they leave. Like, why we can't have this conversation? We're so willing to mix spirits and fluids and all of that. But we're not, we're not going to have... A conversation about what we about to do or what we just did. Honey. So now I got to carry all the names of my immaturity to my future. And that's meaning like, you know, anybody I've ever been with and then trying to be a wholesome woman for some man and be his wife. And I don't think that people's sexual past necessarily um, predicates who they are or can be. I think, you know lessons have to be learned people have stories there are so many paths to this thing we call life so i'm not saying people should be discredited for their past but that is something that you think about and especially someone like myself while i've been on the celibacy journey and um, wrote the book and all of that i've been following all these wife mentors and they just speak so highly of like what it is that masculine alpha men are looking for in women and you know type of woman you want to be and so if you're out there being promiscuous prior to meeting him like how are you going to attract the good man and all that if you just out here for everybody so it's just more things that make you think about 
or how my actions and what I'm doing with my body now is it benefiting me in the long run. Um, so now I have to carry all the names of my immaturity to my future who was designed to cover and love me. This game isn't fair, but it is reality. It's not fair that sometimes brothers will tell you, no, I don't want to get in deep with you because um, you, you've you been a thought. Like, you no, you, your sexual past or history should discredit you from love or not being marriage material. But if that man's standard is, I don't want to marry a woman that has been with everybody and has continued to be with everybody up until she met me, that's his standard and he's not wrong for having that standard you're just not the woman for him maybe somebody else will come along and just be all about your body positivity don't care how many people you've slept with or continue to sleep with and that works for y'all but you can't discredit people that have you know that like what they like and want what they want um so this game isn't fair but it is reality daughters search for daddies and men destined to do her wrong no man to model fathering skills in the home to show her how queens are treated and make her aware of her throne so she's single and out here trying to make love on her own. Once in a bond that feels good and is long. That's a double entendre because growing up and not having a daddy around as a young girl, you're not getting to see how men act, how they look, how they think, how they talk, what they what they feel, how they interact with your mom, with other women. Like You're not seeing it. Like, and even if it's other men, I guess you can gauge that, but not your biological blood, the man that created you, you're not having access to that on a regular basis. Like, just think about that. So to show her how queens, okay, wait a minute. Daughter search for daddies and men destined to do her wrong. No man to model fathering skills in the home. So it's like sometimes you get in these situationships, these relationships, and the woman is, what she's really looking for is a father. Like she's looking for that guidance, that, um, that love, that energy that should have been given to her by a man by the man that created her like so no man to model father and skills in the home to show her how queens are treated and make her aware of her throne to tell her that she's important that she's beautiful that she don't let men or anybody talk to her or touch her in any kind of way like not having all of that so now she's single she out here in the world because what do most of our people do we kick our kids out as soon as they're 18 whether they're in college or not, we want them to get out, get on, be on their own journey, do their own thing on their own. And so now she's single and out here trying to make love on her own. I never had it from my daddy. I'm not under my mother's wing anymore. I'm going to explore. I'm going to meet men. I'm going to explore my body with men. Um... So she's singing out here trying to make love on her own. One, a bond that feels good and is long. Uh, I said that's a double entendre because feels good and long, I was referring to both sex and the fact that she just wants a man that, um, you know, she can have a, a long-lasting, good-feeling bond. Settling for less because no standards were in place. How many times have I done that? My God. Settling for less. Because no standards were in place. Didn't know, didn't have a clue as to what I wanted. What I I was just I was attracting and expecting anything from men like settling for less because no standards were in place. When you have no standards, no boundaries, no you know goals, any and everything can come in your path, and you're just gonna accept it for what it is, and then you go through your trials and tribulations until you figure out, hmm, I actually don't like that, um, and I don't want to deal with that, and I won't continue to deal with that. No standards were in place. Just go with how you feel. Then life is created. So after all this that I just broke down, after all of this, you know, uh, feeling some kind of way, knowing you need time off, uh, dealing with people energetically that you shouldn't be just because it's something to do, because you didn't have um, a father figure around to receive, excuse me, a masculine attention from, and now you, you just out here having raw casual sex with anybody, then life is created. And now she has womb rage. I, I've heard in s stories of young women that have gotten pregnant and were in, upset the entire pregnancy. Or maybe it could have just been the disappointment in themselves or in the baby father because they knew the father wasn't going to be around. Or they weren't all the way 100% sure who the father could be. Um, and it's like, now I'm upset. But let me keep going. Then life is created and now she has womb rage. Mad that she's carrying the baby of a man who didn't know she was sacred and relinquished his responsibility to have any place in their lives. Like he's not thinking about 
what the power of your womb can really do if he ejaculates inside of you and creates a life. He may know the repercussions. He may not care. But you're upsetting him and and talking, dragging him through the street about how such a bad baby daddy he is and all this and that when you laid with him. So, and now she has womb rage, mad that he's carrying the baby of a man who didn't know she was sacred and relinquished his responsibility to have any place in their lives. Mad like so long ago she had dreams of a ring but lost self-control. How many of us have said, oh, I'm going to wait till I get married? I know that was my, when I was, um young i just knew i was gonna be married before i had sex I had sex 16 and i felt really bad about it because i really 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 wanted to wait i must didn't if i lost it that early but lost self-control do we really teach that to the youth or do we just send them to school and tell them to hush sit down whenever an adult tells but are we really implementing in them what self-control looks like what self-discipline looks like what patience looks like what compassion looks like or are we always just no don't do this don't do that i don't think don't do teaching is effective i think implementing how things can affect you is effective for the youth so Mad like so long ago she had dreams of a ring but lost self-control. Mad like seats at tables discussing wedding invitations is null and void. And clearly, if you've heard the song Mad by Solange Knowles, I'm playing with this metaphor. Um, the album that uh, Mad is off of is seat, seat at a Table. Um, so yeah, but it correlates to, okay, so now you mad that you're pregnant. You mad that, you know, the baby daddy ain't gonna be around. Mad that, you know... Uh, you had dreams of a ring, but you're not married while you're having this baby. Uh, mad, like, seats at tables discussing wedding wedding invitations is null and void. Like, you're not about to be sitting around planning your bridal shower right now because you're about to have a baby out of wedlock and you feel some kind of way about that, but you made a choice to have unprotected sex with somebody that you probably barely knew or thought you knew. And this is, this is not a, a shot at anybody for their lifestyle because I've been in many a situation where, thank the Lord... I feel like I should be caught up right now. Like, having somebody's child out of wedlock. Like, I've made some very not wise um, decisions before sexually. And I'm not proud of them. Which is why I took the time to be very honest and open in this book. Just to get other people to think about stuff. Maybe, you know, seeing it on paper or hearing it through my audio book will trigger something in you. Like, I need to be more intentional about some of these decisions that I'm making because they can literally change my life. So if there are any sisters or women that have been in situations like this where it's like, you know, it was just, it was a slip up. It was a one night stand. It was a, a situationship. It was, you know, whatever. We agreed to just have raw sex. Just understand that some of the consequences that come with these things, um, is like missing out on, you know, having your wedding day prior before having a baby. And it just is what it is. You know, you learn from it, you move on. Mad like elevator jams and traffic contractions. Baby don't deserve this type of life, but morals won't let me abort a blessing. So that line came from a situation that I heard about a young lady that was, um going to have a baby and it's like you know like they don't deserve the type of life that they will come into like i'm not financially stable i don't really have a place for them to live this and this and that all these reasons as to why you know they don't want the pregnancy but they're not gonna get rid of it but then it's like but my but my morals won't let me abort a blessing so you don't want to you don't want to not bring the life into the world you don't want to kill the baby um because that's just that's against your morals you just you know, you did the deed, the baby needs to be born, but you really don't want them to have this type of life because it's going to be hard and it's going to change your whole world and they may not be comfortable and you might not, you might really be struggling. Baby don't deserve this type of life, but my morals won't let me abort a blessing. Funny because morals was nowhere around when the text was sent. Sex happened. Now you're naked, exposed, extremely uncomfortable, body calling you back home this time for your own pain. Like, we do some dumb stuff and then try to put it off on something else like you know when you was feeling good and you started sending them little suggestive texts them little egg plants them little smiley faces with the licking of the lips all that kind of stuff you know when you was texting them sexually suggestive stuff and then y'all got up and did something unprotected that there could be some consequences to that like but now we're here having womb rage about it and now you stuck thinking well should i have the baby because this just ain't the lifestyle. This ain't what I want right now. Like, and I'm not saying that that's that's not a valid thought to be having. Like, we know that babies can come from sex, but I think it's just about working smarter and not harder. Like, 
understanding when your ovulation cycle is, I think will really help with that. Because that's, I'm not going to say it's an excuse, but that's one of the main things that people say, well, you know, it was like an unplanned pregnancy or it was accidental or, you know, it just is what it is. I wasn't prepared, but now that they hear, you know, I love my kids, but if I could do it again, let's just start learning how to track our ovulation cycles. That might help because we're only releasing our eggs at a certain part of the month. So, you know, it's like, we just got to find other ways if we, if we don't want to use those things. Cause I understand, uh, um, condoms can be uncomfortably terrible for people and it's not really a natural thing people want to do, but it's something that we feel like we have to, or we must to keep ourselves safe and protected. So it's like, well, let's, let's go the extra mile and get smart about some stuff so we can enjoy this natural act. Sex is a natural act. And who wants to be, uh, scared and nervous every time they engage in it that i might have something or i might have a kid let me learn how to eat clean and what herbs and things that i need to detox my body so that it should something happen i i can get rid of it or to prevent it from even being able to happen let me you know but that requires a whole another set of discipline eating clean and um making sure that you can rid yourself of diseases by what you consume how you detox peace rachel um and or using the contraceptive method, methods that are available, which are condoms and birth controls and things like that. So, funny because morals was nowhere around when the text was sent. Sex happened. Now you naked, exposed, extremely uncomfortable body calling you back home. This time for your own pain. Decisions made in the dark return to the light. That's self-explanatory. Just makes her want to fight. The battle is internal. And will always be. Once we learn to tame that beast, only then can we truly be free. Now, when I initially wrote this poem, I I really didn't um, even understand what I was saying. But until now, like I just was sitting in the bed, I was thinking about stuff. Like I said, I've been posting in the exchange group about, you know, some sex questions. And everybody's like, oh, yeah, I got to see papers. We got to be in a committed relationship before we're having, you know, raw sex and all this and that. And I'm like, I know so many people out here that are not doing that been there done that like we're having our sexual experiences we're just trust was what was one of the lines trust was risky but we did it anyway searching for our high each other's drug of choice addicted to bad decisions that felt so good a rush going nowhere fast like i'm addicted to bad decisions i know this ain't good for me i know the consequences that could come from it i know i could be a whole unmarried unwed mother if i do this act with this boy but i'm gonna do it anyway because i'm feeling good that's what i want to do like, we have to be honest about that. We have to have that conversation. And we have to have that conversation with our partners. Like, what what I, what I, what really boggled me and why I did this um, and inspired me to do this breakdowns because when all the people in the group were saying um, they have to have papers and all this and that, I'm like, I have a line in one of my poems that says, no questions ever asked by the guys about my sexual past. We all just learn to relax in the comfort of a warm space. And that's what it feels like. Sometime after the deed is done, or while y'all in the moment, y'all in the midst, y'all being intimate and foreplay and all that, and then it comes to the time where it's time to take the penis out and insert it in the vagina, and you realize neither one of you have a condom, but you still make the executive decision to go ahead and do it. It's like, wow. He ain't even question. He ain't even ask if I was good, if I got paid, but like, he clearly don't care. <laughs> like, and by you respond, you clearly don't care either. And maybe that's okay for that moment. Maybe just energetically, vibrationally, spiritually, whatever. Y'all was meant to link. No biggie. And since naturally, no one wants to wear condoms anyway. It's not, you know, we weren't born with them. N naturally, you just did what nature does. But we live in a society in times where we understand it's a lot out here and there are consequences of some of our reactions. So, you, you know, running a risk of, I might but for right now none of that matters for right now i just want to get the, the act done like so i um that's really all i had to say about it i just want to get on here and do a a video breakdown lyrical breakdown of my poem womb raid so if you didn't catch it from the beginning um i'll have this live on my page and i'm gonna put it on my youtube as well and i'll be doing a few of these a week um because i think it's important most people will not buy the book or have not bought the book because they're they think that i'm preaching to them about not having sex and that's like the total opposite of what I'm doing in this book. I'm actually talking very much a lot about sex and some sexual experiences that we, most of us have went through. 
or know people that have or maybe haven't experienced any of this because maybe they're not that sexual of a being that's not that important to them so they're not aware of what's going on out here so i get very um straightforward uh raw conversation surrounding um sex and alcoholic influences and um addictions and things like that so i appreciate y'all for tuning in with me you can check out the celibacy chronicles it's on amazon for 15 dollars. i think with shipping tax and all that come up to like 22 something so you may as well just buy it straight from me i have in some new batches um within the coming weeks i also have some audio book available um of this poetry book i have hard copy cds and you can also find me on disctopia.com um and download it or stream it from there so i'm gonna post all those links in the comment section but i appreciate y'all and y'all continue to have a blessed rest of your saturday peace love and light make sure you're loving yourself the best okay and that you self-analyze and you think about some of the things you do and have conversations with your friends and your family and especially people that you're intimate with peace